A lot of people keep asking me, yo, Turbo, when are we going to get that M4 build after the recent nerf? There was a huge weapon balancing nerf that made a couple weapons a little less viable than others. Thankfully, the M4 wasn't one of those. However, the stock attachment was one of those attachments that actually got affected. So today I'm going to be bringing you my updated M4 setup as well as a new attachment that I feel helps the M4 beam a lot more, especially in multiplayer. So this is a multiplayer specific class setup. I will be posting my Warzone setup later on in the week. So hopefully you stick around for that. But anyways, before we get into the gameplay, can we get a like goal of 500 likes? I'd really appreciate it. I know you guys can hit that like goal. You guys have been really smashing that like button and it really means a lot to me. And if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe. Join Turbo Nation today. Make it official, man, and subscribe. Turn on notifications. Let's just get into the class setup here. So for the muzzle, I'm going to be running with the monolithic suppressor now obviously you guys should know this by now i like sound suppression because i like to play stealthy i don't like the enemies knowing where my exact location is when it pings on the compass when i'm firing my weapon so that really helps me out and i like to play a flanky type of play style where i go around the map i stick to the walls and i attack the enemy from behind so being as stealthy as possible is very important now the other pro to this is the damage range that it does give you now the damage range is also increased by about seven and a half percent so this actually helps you out a lot in a lot of situations so this build is built for pretty much any map out there so for the barrel i'm going to be running with the corvus custom marksman barrel this one's going to give us the damage range bullet velocity as well as that recoil control now that bullet velocity and the recoil control is very important specifically because the bullet velocity actually does increase your damage range by quite a bit and the recoil control is going to be very essential in helping you beam enemies so that's also very important now the one thing about this is that your aim down sight speed and movement speed are definitely going to be compromised just quite a bit but not by much so that's why you have to keep in mind when you're going around corners or going into a new area you have to always assume there's an enemy there and pre-aim always be ready for the next gunfight so keep that in mind so for the rear grip we're going to be adding stippled grip tape this significantly helps out our aim down sight speed as well as that sprint to fire speed so the sprint of fire speed is the main reason why i'm using this attachment because if you're going to be playing in multiplayer it's a very fast paced type of game mode so you want to be ready for the next gunfight even if you get surprised by an enemy you want to be able to pull up your weapon as fast as you possibly can all right so for the ammunition i'm running with the 50 round mags personally i feel like if i put the 60 round mags it just adds a little bit more weight to the gun and if i'm trying to flank around the map and i'm just moving way too slow that could mean two things the enemy could chase me down faster or i'm not going to be able to catch up to enemies or get out of bad situations okay that was three things but whatever you get the point uh and you know yes this extended mag looks so sweet man and that red glossy texture on there as well as the stars from the u.s flag you know by the way this is the freedom pack m4 and i absolutely love it 50 round mags is more than efficient in multiplayer to get you a lot of kills now for the underbarrel, this is a pretty new addition to my m4 setup i'm gonna go ahead and throw a screenshot on the screen for you guys to check it out so as you can see there's different recoil patterns here the merc foregrip is going to be the second recoil pattern and as you can see it has some of the cleanest and most consistent bullet patterns out there which is going to make it so much easier to control that recoil now one thing about the merc foregrip that you may or may not know is that it actually adds a little bit of movement speed even if it doesn't say so in the pros so that would be one reason why you should go with the merc foregrip because it helps you with that movement speed especially with the movement speed reduction that we get from using the barrel and the extended mags it does help a lot yo to celebrate 100,000 subscribers i'm officially announcing my first ever merch drop is now available between july 9th to july 19th you got 10 days to cop this exclusive merch this is a limited drop and will never be seen again if you've been rocking with me for the longest or you just became a huge supporter take your allegiance to turbo nation one step further and represent by grabbing you a turbo nation t hoodie crew neck available in all sizes different colors and as a thank you i will personally shout you out if you take a picture with my merch on and tag me either on twitter instagram or discord cop it now before you never see it again all right, so that about wraps it up for the class setup portion of the video. Now I will be breaking down a gameplay using this exact same class setup. And I'm also going to be offering my tips and tricks as I go through the gameplay. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back. And here we are. We're going to be playing on Kandor Hideout and we're going to be using the exact 
M4A1 class setup that I showed you guys earlier in the video. Now, please excuse the face cam and all the chatter in the background. This was actually a clip taken from my Twitch live stream. I felt like it would be a good idea to show you guys this gameplay to see how I play with other teammates. Now, the one thing I want you guys to take away from this gameplay is that my strategy never changes. If you're new to my channel, I'm always flanking, staying away from my teammates because it allows me to sneak up behind the enemies. And the whole reasoning behind that is that they're not able to predict my movement because they're just so focused on my teammates. So let me go ahead and actually rewind to this portion of the gameplay as soon as it starts i always go through this area in candor hideout mainly because it's the most secluded and most covered area i really like to minimize the amount of risk factors whenever i'm moving along the map and that's something that you have to consider so as you can see here i'm about to approach the garage there's an enemy right there and i do have a teammate here with me and I'm going to pre-aim down every corner, down every line of sight. Now, I'm not actually going to push right away. What you see me do before I go into every area is I take a small little moment to pause and I check the area first before going out there to rush because there could be multiple enemies hiding in different corners here, here, or out here. So I like to pre-aim first and see if it's clear and then I'll go out there and check it out. But watch what I do right here. I come up to this corner because I know that there's an enemy behind there. And I utilize this mounting mechanism and that enables me to number one, protect my body at all times. And number two, it makes it harder for the enemy to shoot me, especially if he knows where I am. And I have this significant advantage by mounting just like that. So my teammate actually just died behind me. If you took a look at the mini map. Now I went ahead and retreated so that I'm able to get a better positioning and understanding of where the enemy's coming from. And that's how I was able to get the kill. So I'm pre-aiming down this line of sight, mainly because look at where my, my teammates are at. They're right here in line with me or behind me so that must mean that the enemies must be in front of me so that's why i am paying attention in this direction right here so i do see this guy coming what? up to me and unfortunately he was able to take me out he utilized that sliding mechanic and that's why i lost that gunfight so what i'm going to do is i'm still going to go back to this side of the map mainly because there's a sentry gun on the other side and i know this is where most of the enemies are rushing and unfortunately i was just double teamed in that situation so, you know, it did work out for me. I did kill one of them, but the other person came through and killed me. And there's really nothing you can do about that. You know, that's why establishing your position and dominating right away is very important to be able to restrict those type of surprises from happening. So again, I'm pre-aiming as I jump around this corner. And that's something you want to get used to. And the fact that I pre-aimed right there is the reason why I won that gunfight. Now, in this situation, let me just rewind it 10 seconds here. Now, what I do, like this is just an instinct. I didn't know that this guy was here. But you have to get used to assuming there's going to be an enemy there. And this is a perfect example of that. As you can see, there was an enemy there. I didn't know he was there, but it, I instinctively turned to that corner. And that's how I was able to get this guy, especially paired up with the drop shot maneuver. If you don't know how to drop shot, make sure you check that link down below in the description. I show you all these moves and techniques that you can utilize and apply it to your own game. So that's how I was able to survive that gunfight. So now I do also notice that there is a kill streak up in the air. So I want to take cover right away and I'm pre-aiming like the little things. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry about the whole weirdness right there. But you know, th this is just a huge mistake. I see a lot of people doing. I come into here, right? I take a peek right there. There's nothing, even though there's nothing, there could still be an enemy literally right there. And I wouldn't know it. Now watch how I make this small little move and I come around the corner here. I cut the corner, I stick to the walls. The main reason why I do that is so that I can actually catch an enemy who's walking through this door and he won't see me in his line of sight, but I will see him and I'll take him by surprise. You know, that's what it's all about. Outsmarting your enemies and thinking about all your moves. So again, there wasn't nothing clear. And before I went out, I made sure I pre-aimed and watch how I just literally swayed my direction to the right there just very quickly, right? I pre-aimed everywhere. I checked my right momentarily. And then I focus my attention back in this direction. Again, I'm looking in all these areas where enemies are most likely going to be in that uh, drop shot definitely saved my life. Now, I didn't know for a fact that there was an enemy there when I threw that C4. But the simple fact that I knew the positioning of my teammates on my minimap tells me that there's most likely going to be enemies in this area. All right. So again, as I come around this corner, I pre-aim. I jump. I pre-aim. And I just pretty much just take these guys down through this line of sight. And that's what I absolutely like about this M4 build. It. it just feels so steady, especially with the Merc foregrip and multiplayer. I really recommend using that Merc foregrip. If you guys didn't know, it also adds a little bit of boost to your movement speed, about 3.5%, I believe. And now you also want to be really cautious of how much ammo you have in your reserve. 
And you always want to put down that munitions box right away in case you don't run over dead bodies to pick up that 556 ammo. So as you can see here, I'm just kind of gatekeeping the opponent because I know that's where they're spawning in from. Now this guy right here, I get extremely lucky, but I swiftly changed to my secondary because I just didn't have enough time to reload my main weapon, which is the M4, to be able to take that guy out. So always remember what you have, your secondary, your tools, like your C4. And that's how I was able to survive those type of situations. So let me go ahead and back it up here as well. Again, that sliding and drop shot mechanic saved my life. And you know what? Something as small detail as these little footprints that you do see here. Right there, you see these footprints. All right. So that was also an indication and why I knew where to look at that exact moment. And you can see his gun sticking out from the corner. Now, it's not over yet. I'm also listening for footsteps. I do notice fresh footprints right here as well. And I make the connection and that's how I was able to get the kill. So right now, I'm pretty much just anchoring this area of the map. You know, let's call this lane number one. In Call of Duty, traditional maps have three different lanes that you can break down the map into. So right now, I'm in lane number one. Most of my teammates are probably in lane number three, out in the field, out in the open, which I really don't recommend venturing out there. The risk factors are just way too high, and you're going to get killed off your streak. So right now I'm just retreating momentarily ah, because I want to reset my positioning. You know, I want to make sure that I stay alive and I've got my final kill streak here and I just want to see if I can, you know, keep this kill streak alive. Now, I believe in this situation, I'm really trying to look for a safe spot to call in my chopper. And, you know, honestly, even though this gameplay turned out really well, I feel like I waited way too long to call in my chopper gunner. You know, I could have just popped it right away or I could have just kept up that momentum and tried to keep on going and trying to get as many kills as possible, which would eventually lead me to my nuke. So that's something I would definitely improve on. Like, I, I felt like I was just indecisive in this situation. So, you know, if you ever caught up in these kind of situations and you get your kill streak and you're trying to figure out when to call it in, you know, either call it in right away, you know, find a safe spot, stop wasting time, or, you know, just keep doing what you were doing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, you got all these kills by doing a specific thing. Why not just keep that up? So. You know, I don't really call in chopper gunners too often, so I don't really know exactly where I need to go on the map. So this was just a random spot that I found here. So pretty much it's just self-explanatory from this moment on here. Clearly, we see exactly where the enemies are. And you can also make callouts to your teammates and, you know, help them out a little bit. You know, let them know where they're hiding because it could be hard for you to get kills because people are hiding in buildings. You know, unfortunately, we lost this match. And at the end of the match, I was, you know, you're saying, like, I was really confused. Like, how did we lose this match when we pretty much just had them suppressed so much to the point where they had to hide in buildings? You know, our teammates should have taken advantage of this situation. But you know what? That's okay. You know, not all of us are going to be thinking the same thing. But, you know, there's only so much you can do. So at this point, I'm pretty much just looking for where the enemies are coming in from. Sometimes they don't appear right away, so you got to check the spawns. And that's the really cool thing that I like about the chopper gunner is that you can actually use it wherever you want to. So that was the end of that. And I got actually really lucky right there. I noticed that he killed my teammate and he nearly killed me. And by the way, I mean, look at this camo, man. This camo is sick. This is the Freedom Tracer pack, by the way. It came out during July 4th weekend. And unfortunately, in that situation, I should have at least killed one of them. But, you know, it just didn't happen. And, you know, I got unlucky because I got double teamed there. So uh, that was the end of my streak. If you look at the score, the bottom left hand corner. Sorry about the cursor just bringing up the whole bar loading bar and all that. Um, it was a really close match. You know, we really had the best opportunity to win here. And now I'm going to throw C4 in here just to see if I can get this guy that's up there. Now he's down here. I go ahead and drop shot once again. I get hit by that claymore. I pull out my Renetti oh, because I heard somebody behind me. So but you know what? It is what it is. We lost by three. I feel like we seriously could have won that match. There is the final KD right there. 27 kills, four deaths with a six KD ratio. I feel like I could have gotten a lot more kills if I didn't stall for a time looking for a place to call it my chopper gunner. So that's something that you could take away from this video. So anyways, that's about it. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. You know, I know a lot of you guys really love the multiplayer breakdown gameplays. You know, so just bear with me because it, during the season, there were just so many different updates that I wanted to cover. So, you know, keep that in mind that I do have my priorities, especially as a creator, to get out content that people are actually looking for to help my channel grow a little bit more. But just please understand that multiplayer content such as this will never go away. It's always going to be the main thing you'll see on my channel for the most part. I 
appreciate all the support and make sure to subscribe if you're new around here turn on notifications join turbo nation today man and by the way the merch store is still up if you're watching this video it expires on july 19th hurry up get your merch now represent turbo nation i really appreciate the support and i hope you guys have a really great day thank you have a good one Bye bye